Welcome back to episode three, where we're installing this 8.2 millimeter stroker crank into our 232 cc fire breathing freaking monster GY6. This is the motor that pumps out nearly 30 horsepower and hits almost 100 miles per hour. Yeah, pretty crazy. In episode one, I showed you how to prep the engine cases. We installed final drive gears, get the engine bushings in. In episode two, we installed the rear disc brake kit. That way we can slow that sucker down. Much, much needed on these big block motors. In episode three here, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how to install this sucker. And this applies to a lot of different scooters, not just the GY6, so there's a lot here to learn. Why would you install one of these suckers while you're doing the build? Well, A, the Chinese GY6 crankshaft, it's no bueno. Chinese bearings, low-grade crank. Stock crank is good up to about 170 cc, but we're doing 232. It's gonna be a stronger rod, better bearings, and just a better crank overall, not to mention that it's balanced. That's the reason why you do a stroke or crank, food for thought. Say you have a 63 millimeter bore on your GY6, it's 180 cc. If you put a 8.2 millimeter stroke or crank into that engine case, now you're at 205 cc's. Just to give you a reference what a stroke or crank will do. It makes the rod much longer. The thing about that, there is a little th secret when you do that though, you have to trim the piston because when the piston comes down, you don't want it to hit the crank right there. That's just a little bit of 101. Let's get into this video. Now that we have the complete rear end done with disc brakes, final drive, all that, <laughs> we can now continue on to the crankshaft. But the first thing I'm gonna do, you notice I have this like heavy impact because it's so much weight there, this thing's gonna tip over. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some dowel pins in and we'll do a little bit of uh, some sealant there. People always ask in the comments why you put sealant on there. Literally, it's an extra barrier. The last thing you want to do is split your cases. It's a smart thing to do, even though there's a gasket. Always do a little bit of sealant. The other final drive and the other ones, it's not that big of a deal. It does make it a little bit messy, but I promise you'll thank me later if your engine starts to leak. So that's what I'm going to do. We have our uh, gasket here, which is weird because this needs to be cut out later. We've got our dowel pins from our dowel pin kit. Those are going to go there like that, but first, like I said, you can bolt it together like that, but I like to use Permatex oil resistant gasket maker, just a little bit, small amount. One on, a little bit on each side, so let's do that. I don't want it to squish out and go everywhere, I just want a small coat. Dowel pins in their little, the bigger areas that you see, do like that, and then a little bit more. Since this is the paper, it takes a little bit more because it likes to soak in. You can even take this out just to get around there. I like that this is black too with the black engine cases. So if it does push out, it's not like this gray ugliness. You want to locate in your hardware kit this little guy, this kind of a different looking bolt. This is for the timing chain tensioner. Now with these 232s, we do four valve timing chain tensioners because they are longer. This is what we, we won't need this guy right now, but this we will. Let me show you exactly where this goes. Okay, we got our timing chain tensioner and this is the, where that little bolt goes right there. You wanna make sure you do this the right way, like this, because this is where the chain rides. If you do it like that, then it's backwards. So I'm gonna go like that, line it up, and screw it in. But I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the end of here. And also I like to do just a little bit of some, uh, that sealant around the O-ring, just as a double proof, because you don't want that thing leaking, that's for sure. Line it up. Screw it in. I'll do it by hand real quick. Eight millimeter Allen. When you get it tightened down, just snug, nice and snug. That should move. Next we got our crank seals. Take a little bit of assembly oil. I just like to put it in the seal itself so it doesn't run dry. Okay, now put it in the case. Here's our engine case. Both seals are the same, so actually you can flip this over. Remember, this is the inside of the uh, crankcase, so that's the back, that's what we want. We want it to be the back side. I'm gonna actually get a, a, a socket so we can push that in. Okay, backwards 22 millimeter socket. You just go easy, a little bit at a time. Now let's do the other engine case. This one's easy because you just push it in. Just line it, line it up a little bit at a time, go around, just make sure it's flush, which it is. Wipe off the ugliness, keep the oil, the grease in the uh, little crack right there. Remember this is the outside, outside of the engine case. The inner, the backwards part is on the inside. Okay, I got my 
8.2 millimeter stroker crank that we must have for the 232. And I have our 47 link or 94 link. 94 if you count all of them. If you just count the, the top ones, you're at 47 links. I would definitely count that because if this is wrong, then you're gonna be taking your whole engine apart. So this is gonna actually goes on the other way, but since I have it like that, I'll show you, I'll give a little zoom in. So this is how the chain's gonna go. This is very difficult because, let me show you, I have to slide the crank through here, not, not messing up the seal. Remember, we just put the seal in on that side. This thing's freezing cold. Plus, I need to put our timing chain in here like this. Oh, and be careful not to mess your gasket up. So let's see if I can pull this off. Got the timing chain in there, okay. Just holding it with my hand. Now the crankshaft, try to get it through the other side. Okay, got it. Now we have to try to get it on the splines by not me and not messing up the seal and getting this arm kind of lined up so it's not below on this case. So let's, let's try to work this. This just takes some serious patience. Here we go, got that in, down in here. I have to get the, that chain onto the crankshaft, so. And then sometimes if you spin it, it'll catch too. So, let's see. 2,000 years later. The chain's on its little thing, on a sprocket. Now, grab the other case and make sure this is all set up. This doesn't have any seals or anything. You just have to get in there real nice and easy, give it a little push, but there it is. See that? See these extra gaskets? Once I crank everything down, I'll, I'll give her the old trim. You also wanna take a look at your seal. Just make sure you're good all the way around, which it looks like we are. That side of the crankcase is good. Now I just need to put a couple bolts in there. I'll, actually, let's just, I'll show you the rest here. Okay, and then or, in order to figure out what screw, remember I just slide them in and the, we got eight to 10 millimeters with it lightly screwed in. A thread, they're not thread showing, but the bolt sticking out basically, just snug. They say nine foot pounds, but real talk, a lot of times you just have to use your best judgment, especially with these, uh, these type of engines. Next, let's put a little assembly lube on the bearings of the crank, give her a little spin. All right, for this side of the engine case, these are the guts. You need your kickstart idle gear with the shaft. You're gonna need your Performance starter clutch. This is a 232, we gotta have a performance starter clutch. You're gonna need your COSO oil pump. This pumps 20% more oil. Billet housing, really, really good oil pump. Oh, you'll need a four millimeter socket for that, which I have pulled out. This is your oil pump gear. You need to get out of your hardware kit, the uh, M10 nut. Got our Woodruff keys, that'll locate the, well, the starter clutch. And then that's also gonna locate the, the magneto when we put it on there. Then we've got our oil pump chain and our oil pump cover that goes over the top here. So for if some reason this nut came loose, this oil pump gear will not come off. Then we have the hardware to install that. It's all going underneath this engine case. Let's do it. We got these first, put a little red Loctite, or blue Loctite, I mean, underneath there, like that. Four millimeter Allen. Coso goes up, just get them started. Nice and snug, and or nine foot pounds. Okay, now we need to put our oil pump chain on. There's one, two, and there's like a sprocket, third one in the back, it's the middle one. It looks, it's deeper. Let me just zoom in so you know what I'm talking about. See that? There's a couple back there. Just gonna drop that sucker down like that so it's perfect. Okay, next we have our little um, sprocket with the little D in the middle. So, I'm gonna kinda angle, this This got a D shape too, the uh, oil pump, so it's upwards. So I'm gonna kinda line this up so I don't have to mess with it so much. Make sure that D portion is in that slot, if it's not, your oil pump's not gonna spin. Very, very important. Like for instance, that is not lined up. See how it wobbles? If I turn it a little bit, now it's lined up. Put a little 
blue Loctite on there. By the way, it is designed to do that. It moves around like that. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with it. What I do is I grab my variator and I put it on the back of the crank. That way you have something to hold and you can torque this thing down. Get this crank down. There we go. Then you've got this guy. This is designed so that when you put it on, that if that nut ever backs up, it ain't coming off because of this little guy here. So a little blue Loctite on the end of that. Get her halfway started and torque them down. Nine foot pounds, nice and snug. Next is the idler gear. I just put a little bit of um, like assembly lube on the shaft. Slide the shaft through. It's got a little bit of a hydraulic like it wants to push out. So the cases will push it in, but it's like that. Now we need to put our little woodruff keys in these little suckers. So basically, let me show you. You see those little slots there? These are hard to put in. Normally you got to tap them with a little, a little hammer, just like very, very lightly. That, that one's halfway in. I'll tap it and I'll do the same thing on the other one. Okay. Next step is our starter clutch. It's going to go out like this. If you, if you do it this way, it's wrong. It's got to out like that. And we're, we're going to line up our little uh, woodruff key slot right there with the woodruff key on the crank. And a lot of times the woodruff key is lifted up right here. And sometimes you just kind of have to tap it down. It doesn't take much. Just tap it down. There we go. Next, out of your uh, little hardware kit, this is your starter clutch. I'm going to put a little bit of red Loctite on there. I don't want that coming loose. These are reverse threads, so loosen to tighten, tighten to loosen. So I'm backing it up and it is getting tighter. And remember, I still have that over on the backside, my variator, so I can move it around. This is our special tool for the starter clutch, castle tool. That goes on there like that. Remember, backwards is tightening. You pretty much need to hit this with an impact there's no way around it. It's hard to get tight without it because the crank is moving around. So I'm going to grab it from the back side. Okay. That sucker's on there. It's important for you to note that these teeth are lined up. If you have it backwards, you know, the teeth aren't going to line up. So there it is. Now we're pretty much ready to put a gasket on, put our cover on. Okay. Dowel pins. Find the uh, biggest holes. There's one there. There's another one down here. Then we've got our gasket. Yes, it goes on like that. I don't normally do uh, any type of sealant because if this thing leaks, it's not the end of the world. These things generally don't leak, but you're more than welcome to put sealant around there if you'd like. Keep in mind this gasket is different and this case is different than a GY6A engine. The only bolt that was in here was this guy in the, in, inside the engine case. The rest of them are along the outside. And we just have to be careful when we put this on that that seal doesn't get caught up on the Woodruff key. So. We're going to go real slow and my gasket's coming loose back there. Just a little wiggle. Make sure your gasket stays in place, which is not up here. There we go. Okay. Now we have to do the art of finding what screws go in there. We're going to use that whole rule of eight to 10 millimeters. I've got all of these hand tight, these screws, just to make sure they're not going to bottom out. Very important step. I left these loose. I tried them out to make sure they went down far enough, but I'm not installing them because I have this stator wire brace that'll hold the stator wire down. So keeping those loose, we're going to, I'm just going to kind of snug these up and then I'll go around. We're going in the cross pattern and then I'll double check them to see that they're nine foot pounds. Okay. These are all torqued down except for those two move over here and we've got our stator strap, our 18 pull stator. Of course, that, that strap will hold this, these wires down. We've got four screws from our hardware kit that will attach our fan to our magneto. One very important thing you want to make sure you don't use too long of a bolt and have that bolt come through here. And then when you install your magneto, it spins around and the bolts go right through the magneto. You don't want to do that. And these are for the pickup, these small little weird bolts for the pickup on the stator. And then of course we've got our titanium washer and titanium nut for 
the magneto. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't show you is we needed our stator bolts. Found those in the hardware kit, of course. Okay, stator. You gotta make sure, see this, uh, these wires right here? They need to angle up this way, okay? Do like that. Let me get these hands started really quick so I can let that stator chill. This is our 18 pull stator, by the way. Best of the best. We only do the best of the best. That'll give you max charge every single time. All of our wiring harnesses come with these 18 pull stators. Now, the little strap that I was talking about, that sucker's gonna go like that. It's gonna go like that. Sometimes you have to, you can't do both bolts because it's gotta go down there first. Then you can stick in the, the long bolt. Get those hands started. And see with this strap here, when the magneto goes on there, this magneto goes on there, there's no way for that wire to go into the magneto and destroy itself. So that strap is a necessity. Next is this little rubber grommet goes down right there. Actually, it's flat on one side. So we wanna make sure that the flat side goes outwards. But before I do that, let's get this pickup on there. These little teeny screws, these guys. A little Loctite on them. Let's get this one started. You want to make sure when you tighten this down, you don't, you're not pinching any wires when you go to tighten the pickup coil down. Okay, then we can bring our little collar down, our wire collar, flat side out, just like that. If you notice, all of my wires are really short. Everybody else's stators, they got, you gotta bundle them all up and zip tie them. We keep them short, because that's all you're gonna need. So everything's in there, nice and good. See this little, um, oh, well, I should zoom in. There's the Woodruff key right there. And we've got our magneto. Match up the Woodruff key. It's not matched up, so I'm gonna spin it until it does. See what's going on there? Our Woodruff key needs to be tapped down just a little bit because it's a brand new Woodruff key. So I'm just gonna use the back of the socket. Okay, see it's got a little bit of an angle at it now, which means when I put this on, it should grab better. There it is. Give it a little push, put a little Loctite on the end of our crankshaft, put our titanium washer, titanium nut. I'm gonna grab the crankshaft on the other side. Okay, one thing that I wanna take close note of is right here. I wanna make sure that this pickup is not hitting this reluctor right here. It's this, that guy, very, very important. It needs to be super freaking close without actually touching. I'll turn it over a few times, make sure everything's smooth, which it is. Last step is lining up our fan, the holes on the outside there. Put a little Loctite on there. As you do this, move around, make sure the screw isn't too long. You'll know right away because it'll touch your stator and you'll feel the grinding. I've seen that happen so many times. Oh, and a little trick of the trade, Keep all the bolts loose, because otherwise you're gonna do what I just did. Keep everything loose so that you can get everything started. Then you can crank it down. On the other side, you can grab the variator so you can tighten these suckers down, nice and snug. Just plastic under there, so you don't gotta get wild. There we go. We're getting close, ladies and gents. Can you believe it? The bottom end is done. Look at that. Dang! Now we just need to do the top end and the CVT. Actually, maybe we can do the CVT right now. I think we should. Congratulations, you made it to the end of episode three. Episode four is coming. We're doing an ultimate CVT kit. What is that, you ask? That's our GY6 Ravino clutch. The best of the best clutch for these GY6s. The lightest, the best grabbing clutch attached to a forged pulley, aluminum forged pulley, 842 2030 Kevlar belt with our Pro Build Variator. Not to mention, we're gonna install a case brace so we don't freaking kill ourselves. Case breaks in half. You'll learn all about that in episode four. And we're doing a ankle biter for you ruckus guys and you wanna look sweet and have all that exposed beautiness. That's episode four. And don't forget, if you wanna become a member and get access to exclusive videos, like 80 videos that are not on public YouTube, you can join our DIY video library. There's a little button next to the subscribe button on a desktop computer. Click that and you become a member. Appreciate you guys more than you know. See you in the next vid.